Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. .1. In this video I will present the new and improved Monument Launcher. Uh, previously the Monument Launcher which is designed to launch an entire fully fueled Saturn V into orbit, so basically 3,000 tons into low Earth orbit. Uh, it took a long time to launch it and that is because I was using all sorts of individual parts. There's 105 separate engines on the first stage and this caused a lot of lag. So I decided to amalgamate things in Blender. And so by putting things together and making fewer parts, we can launch this awesomely huge launcher quicker. Uh, and that might spoil us, but we'll see. I also wanted to make it look awesome. Now the fairings don't look particularly awesome and that's because I uh, just took my Atlas V fairing, made it larger and forgot to bring in the textures so uh, I'll need to bring in the textures for that and uh, but anyway here we have a uh, tank that's roughly 3,000 tons it's 2,995 so that's simulating our Saturn V so this will be the best performance we're gonna be able to get from this launcher because any other payload is probably gonna be more complicated than this just one part a dummy tank here um, but you can see uh, my second stage I got substance painter uh, thanks to the steam sale and I've been using it wantonly uh, so I just uh, dumped some textures on there and I sort of went with uh, SpaceX Starship sort of motif you know um, just panels and rivets and maybe sort of a fallout thing too sort of a fallout feel to it and so that's the second stage now but it's a single part this whole thing right and if I can put back on there the nodes are a little bit small right now you can see uh, so that's all one thing as well as the engines these are also just a single part here four of them gimbal but those are the 13 M1 engines that are supposed to be on the stage I made them very simple as you can see not with all the other stuff just pretend that the turbo pumps are tucked inside this bit here and that's probably for the best um, but I really went uh, whole hog on the first stage. I hear that SpaceX is going to use some new form of steel for Starship to make it lighter and all. Well, I did uh, even fancier. I've got Damascus steel. See? Yes, original Damascus steel. Secret, secret technology uh, not uh, seen in centuries whatever anyway uh, there, there are imitations of Damascus steel but there nobody's got the real thing anymore until now <laughs> uh, don't don't talk to me about Damascus steel isn't really that strong etc etc okay this is for fun I mean but this is the first stage and I thought about putting some uh, tubes down in the midst of that inner stage to represent the oxygen going down into through the hydrogen tank might do that still could use some like helium tanks or something I'll think about sprucing that up a bit uh, and here we have our boosters with the RD uh, 270s uh, oh I haven't gotten to the main engine yet but I really did something fancy with the decouplers and uh, the we have separatrons here that's one piece uh, but one thing I neglected you can see it's not actually on the body it was meant to be but I then remembered that we can't have separatrons and decouplers on the same part. You can't have something uh, with a decoupler module and something that produces thrust on the same part. So we've got the stock decouplers there, but we'll ignore that for now. <laughs> this looks better. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I'm not wedded to this whole separatron arrangement. But it's sure better than putting four separate separatrons on each. And these are uh, actually pairs of boosters, see? That's one part. Uh, both tanks and all eight engines are a single part here. So that's efficient part-wise. All right, so yeah, that's how they are. And so this accounts for the thrust of and the fuel uh, for all eight of those engines. And was engine here? Yep, lots of thrust, fifty thousand kilonewtons, because they're each almost seven thousand kilonewtons, and there's eight of them. So 
we need to get this. Oh, and the core engine, right? I haven't mentioned that. I adapted my Aerospike engine. Remember the Aerospike engine for the Daenerys SSTO? It's got 36 M1 engines already. And so what I did was I put five more in the center. I just dug a hole in, put five more. And that closes up too, though, uh, as you can see. Um, uh, I can't really show it to you properly right now. It goes by too fast, but the panels slide inside and then come out. I should have sort of put a little gap there, but I wanted to get this done and nobody's going to notice anyway for a while. So, yeah. The question is whether it can launch. I can make things fancier later as if it wasn't fancy already. That's about as sophisticated a uh, core tank as you've probably ever seen in Kerbal Space Program. But anyway, how does it fly? That is the question. Okay, here we go. Yeah, uh, we can high persistent rotation for now. All right, throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. Now, the booster engines don't gimbal at all. Only the core gimbals, and only a tiny bit. Well, that's still loud. Not as loud as it could be. Okay, let me check the particles. 10,000 particles. Um, the booster plumes need work. Booster, bo booster plumes definitely need work. They're there. They're just really, really tiny for some reason. I managed to get an even worse plume than normal. But performance is better in terms of physics rate. You can see it's maxing out the yaw quite a lot and going back and forth on that. Gotta make sure not to stray too far away from prograde with this. Well, they've got tiny little extensions to them now. Hmm. Well, plume aside, it's looking good. Pretty much good stuff from any angle. The ferry needs work though, obviously. Okay, the first dodgy bit. Booster set. Uh, those separatrons did not fire very well, did they? Uh, well, they went off. Barely. Uh, raise asterisk, this is not, obviously. So there is that downside to this arrangement of pairing them up like this. Well, it's still sort of an asterisk. I'll let you guys uh, give me your opinion on whether it's asterisky enough. It's not. It's not a Korolev cross squared, which it used to be with sixteen separating off. So just our aerospike with uh, forty-one. And I guess we'll use this for the Daenerys as well. It'll be a common engine. Okay. And while that's firing, I'm going to come back over here and demonstrate how this closes. So... Uh, oop. Lower shield. Uh, it's tough to say. Oh, there we go. The eight leaves of that closing like that. I'm happy to have gotten that done. Anyway, uh, fairing set, let's try it. Okay, 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 we can deal with that. That's better than it was before. I don't know if uh, Saturn V can actually fit in there. I just scaled up the Atlas V largest fairing, so... I think the other fairings are heavier. That's one reason why we seem to have more delta V. I'll have to get the older fairings actual mass and apply it to those. These are, uh, are definitely lighter. I think uh, they're each 40 tons, something around there. 
So, uh, again, only four of these engines actually gimbal, as you can see. Just a reminder, this is 24 meters across. The core stage back there is 32. We have a green timer. I'm pretty sure I told the stage to only consume like one kilowatt, but it's consuming 41. I put enough electric charge for it, but still, I, I don't know why it consumes more than I asked it to. Something is doing that. Not a big problem right now, but probably for later it might be. So this is step one in my continued pursuit of Pluto. I called it Pluto Direct, but people then chastised me for that because I call it Pluto Direct because we're not doing a rendezvous in Earth orbit to build the mission, but um, we are flying by Jupiter, so alas, I might not be able to call it Pluto Direct. I do have another series name in mind for that under duress. So I've developed nuclear engines, the Timberwinds. I've got this new version of our main Goliath of a launcher. Next, I need to make some greenhouses, I think. And then I need to also figure out the ion engine situation. And shut down. It's a fine orbit. I'll probably diminish our delta V remaining with a payload like this by increasing the mass of the fairings, maybe diminishing the efficiency of the aerospike. Well, I'll see. And yeah, because I want the performance to be basically the same as the version that we had before. I'm not looking for performance improvements here. But there, we, there you have it. Uh, I hope uh, you thought this looked good. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.